We go in alphabetical order. So that's the way you sent them? I tried to. I hope I got them right. All no. Right, but, yeah. I was hoping the same thing, but unfortunately when I read them, I realized I didn't put them back in order, and it's just... It was 50-something pages right there. <laughs> <there. laughs> yep. Daniel. Yes. Mm -hmm. Getting up there, huh? Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for uh, joining us this evening, and thank you, board members. I'm calling to order uh, the Dorchester County Accommodations Tax Advisory Committee, uh, held here August 27, 2020, at 6 p.m. Um, Again, thank you for coming out in this hectic uh, environment that we are in right now. We appreciate you. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started right away. I've asked uh, Board Member Todd to do our invocation for us. All right, thank you. Heavenly Father, we're here tonight to, to, to do the work of the county, and we ask for your discernment. We ask for your wisdom. Um, we pray for everyone in the community that is uh, experiencing difficulties with uh, the pandemic and, and the unrest that's going on, and we wish that uh, your will would be done to, to, to heal this country and, and make America uh, the country that you'd have it to be. Um, please give this, this body the uh, discernment that we need, um, and it's your name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Todd. All right, I'd like to start out with uh, introductions, first of all. Um, you are doing your presentations tonight. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like you to meet the folks that you're presenting to. Um, so I'd like to start here on my far right. If you can introduce yourself, please. You got it. Hey, guys, I'm Joe Waring, um, and I represent Jay Byers for uh, District 7. Thanks for having us. I'm Tracy Todd. I represent uh, Larry Hargett. Good evening. Ron Jakes, and I represent Bill Hearn. Brian Hutto, I represent George Bailey. And I'm Rick Sutton, I'm a member of ARC. Thank you, folks. All right, we will proceed with the presentations. And the way we're going to do this is we have them listed alphabetically, and we're going to handle them as such. Um, and on the screen here is uh, the uh, applications for each um, each committee or each uh, presentation, presenta presentation, please excuse me. Um, so we are going to go ahead and start out with uh, Audubon. I'm sorry. Let's uh, let's let's get uh, let's get the minutes from last year approved first. All right, everyone is yes. Everyone has an opportunity to look at the approval from uh, the minutes from last meeting, which was held August 27, 2019. Um, is there any discussion, or can I get a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Got a first. Can I get a second? A second. Second. Thank you. 
The ayes have it. The uh, minutes have been approved for last year's meeting. Okay, now we can move on to the presentation and comments of any organization that wishes to uh, present. And our first, our first organization is Audubon Center at Francis Beadler Forest. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, members of the committee. Um, my name is Matt Johnson. I'm the center director at the Audubon Center at Francis, I have to say, Beidler, Beidler Forest. Um, it is a highly debated uh, Beidler versus Beidler. Um, I've been in this position for about six months, and um, uh, this is my first time presenting to you on, on this particular funding source, but uh, the, the county has graciously uh, supported Beidler in the past, and um, so thank you, for, thank you all for that. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about what we're present, what, what, what we submitted in our application tonight, which is a little different than what we have done in the past. In the past, we've asked for support uh, to advertise Bidler. As some of y'all that maybe have been out there know, it's uh, it's pretty far up in the county. It's a little, it's pretty rural. Um, we do have some signage, but we're always trying to get more. And so, um, in the past, we've asked for support for uh, brochure distribution and di distrib distributed about thirty thousand brochures a year through. Uh, area rest stops along interstates and um, places like the Charleston Visitors Bureau. This year we're, we're asking for a little something different and I want to tell you a little bit about it. Um, over the last couple years, Audubon has been focusing a lot more on understanding the cultural history of, of the county, in particular the area around Byler Forest. And one of the things that we have learned is um, of the evidence that Maroons visited the swamp. And these were escaped um, freedom seekers, escaped slaves that left plantations and went into swamps like Four Hole Swamp. And we, as we started to learn that story, we started to explore these, um, these events called Cultural Heritage Day. And we've had Cultural Heritage Days at Bidler um, for three years from 20, 2017 to 2019. We had plans to have one this year, we may still try to do that in some capacity, but we're exploring it in a COVID world um, to quite how to do that. But um, moving forward, we'd like to make this a regular part of our programming. And so our application tonight is actually asking for uh, support for two, two programs that we hope to do over the next two years uh, around this cultural heritage. One other thing I'll mention that we're doing as part of this is submitting an application through the National Park Service they have a program called the Underground Railroad Network to Freedom Program. And so we are in the process of um, submitting an application to have Bidler named as a site listed on um, this National Park Services program. There are about 500 sites across the country. And so trying to raise awareness around this history and interpret it at the center and make people not only in Dorchester County or the Tri-County area, but across South Carolina and out of South Carolina uh, aware of this history. So. Um, you can, under, you can see through our application here, that's, that's our goal. I will say the, the cultural heritage days that we've done in the past have been extremely um, uh, well attended. In fact, the first one that we had in 2017, I think we had the highest attendance that we've ever had at any event. Um, we had some 300 people, and if you've ever been out to Bidler, it's not a very big parking lot, so it was, it was uh, kind of challenging getting people in and out. But um, we, wanna, we wanna kind of, um, continue to build on this momentum, and this is a sort of a priority for Audubon moving forward. So our application this year is asking for your support to make these programs um, uh, continue in the future and support them financially, uh, and our ability to advertise for them as well. So to, to help people around, around the Tri-County area and around South Carolina learn a little bit more about, about this unique history that we have here in Dorchester County. Very good, thank That's you. That's all I have, if you have any questions. Questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up is Dorchester County Heritage Center. Hello everybody, my name is LeClaire Mizell and I'm the um, director at the Dorchester County, let me say in Dorchester County, Dorchester Heritage Center. We were, up until the end of last year, the beginning of this year, the Dorchester County Archives and History Center, but we have changed our name. Um, so now we're the Dorchester Heritage Center. Um, we are a museum and an archives located in the former Dorchester County Courthouse in St. George. 
Um, we have a museum there. We've got archives. We have probably over three, 400,000 pages of documents in the archives. We have a museum that is open to the public. Um, right now, because of everything that's going on, we are severely limited in the, in the number of visitors we can have at a time, but we are still open for reservations um, on a reservation-only basis. What, I, what the application that we are submitting this year is, is a multifaceted. Um, there are several things that we would like to do. As I said, we have changed our name. Um, last year, we presented um, in our application to this committee, we, we requested funds for rack cards for the brochures. We got those. And all of them say Dorchester County Archives and History Center. And um, so I have been able to change them um, kind of ignoring the fact that this, the logo says Dorchester County Archives and History Center, but I've been able to change the website because of course that changed also. So we're making do for right now, but we would like to obtain some new cards that, that um, have our correct name on them. And I will use the old ones until they run out, but we would like to have new ones. And um, as the gentleman from Audubon said, from Badler said, we have um, rack cards in the welcome centers, in area businesses, in Charleston, places like that. So we're trying to, to get the business in. We also would like to um, request signage. As he said, signage is always important um, and always lacking. Um, so we would like directional signage, funds for directional signage into the museum. Um, we have also requested for a new website. Currently, the website that we have is on Yola. It is a free website. It is what we put on it. And it's very limited in what it's allowed to do, what we're capable of doing. What we would like to do is have a professional web designer um, design our website for us so that we can draw more attention from more people throughout the state, throughout the area, those coming down, take advantage of those coming down to the low country area and try to catch them on the way um, before they get down there. Uh, we also have an event coming up in March of 2021. We were contacted by the, um, I don't remember if the, I think it was the State Museum who contacted us. They were in the process of forming a new traveling exhibit called The Food We Celebrate. They chose certain iconic foods throughout South Carolina that they thought represented South Carolina. They chose certain areas to represent those foods and they, cho they chose certain organizations to provide the content and the copy for those foods. They chose St. George for grits, and they chose us to provide that content. As a part of that, we get to host that traveling exhibit for a month. It was supposed to be in, I think it was supposed to be May of last year, um, or this year, this year, but of course that fell right in the midst of corona and every, all museums shut down. So we, we have requested it for March of 2021. So we would like to do a uh, uh, it, it'll be, we hope, right before the Grits Festival, um, which is usually held in April. So we tr intend to use it as a kind of like a preemptive uh, publicity for the Grits Festival and try to build on, have a, a special events and stuff throughout the month um, that we can draw people in to the museum as well. Um, and then we've also added, um, a request in here for maintenance and operation expenses. Of course, it's always, uh, right now things are tough, as you all know, probably. Everything is getting hit because people just are afraid to come out, um, afraid to come in. So we have put in for a request for uh, maintenance and operating expenses as well. And I think that's it. Thank you. Appreciate Thank that. You. All right, uh, Dorchester County Historical Society, Kroger House. Good evening, everybody. I've been coming before you for about 15 years now, and I want to thank you for every little dime that you've given us. The old Kroger House, which some of you may not be familiar with, is on one of the oldest roads in our county, the old historic Wire Road, which was originally the Broad Path dates back to the 1786 
as was verified, 1780s, not exactly 86, but in the late 1780s. That was verified by Matt Webster, a historic preservationist at Drayton Hall Plantation. The house was donated to us by the owners because it had been abandoned since the 60s. It was in rather bad shape. So following the detail and the instruction of historic preservationist Glenn Keyes, which is renowned in the South, we were able to fund it and restore it. So now we try to maintain it as much as we can. That takes fundraisers, and usually we have two big ones a year. Our first one was should have been in April and we had to cancel it. That's the fundraiser that we raise the money to pay the insurance and other costs to maintain the house on a yearly basis. We are planning a big event in November, which will be our third year. Our first year we had over 100 people. Past year we had over 200 people, and we're really moving towards even more. So we are asking today, requesting to help us with some advertisements, mailings, because we did the co-op last year. We had people come from Camden, Georgetown, Georgia, way out of state. They saw it, and when you open that house, we've never opened it that we didn't have a crowd come. It's just rare that you get to see something that old. And when we did preserve it, we said we wanted to re, uh, restore not renovate. So we left a lot alone. It's three stories and from the bottom up all the staircase, all the woodwork in the house is original and the old horsehair plaster is all the way up to the top. We left walls open um, so that you could see how the pegs and how, the, how it was put together. This is really exciting. And the famous blood stain, this house was an early stagecoach stop and uh, there's a blood stain of a body where someone was shot when it was a stagecoach stop and in, and every family that's ever lived there tried to remove it. I am so thankful they were not able to remove that blood stain because if you get a group of young boys at that house and you mention the word blood stain, get out of the way because they're going upstairs to see it. So we're really happy that it's there. And it's part of the house, it's part of the history. But to have an event at the Coker House, we don't have any bathrooms. And we have a very small bathroom. It was a closet. Nobody could open the door, so we just put a sink and a toilet in there in case we had a meeting. So we have to rent portalettes, and we have to get tents and chairs and things to have it. And like I said, last year it was over 200, and we really hope to be able to advertise further out. And because we didn't have our first fundraiser this year, we did not receive any money to help pay the insurance on the house. The liability insurance is way over $2,000 a year. So we're also asking for that. So I welcome all of you. If you've never seen it, it's a part of your history. It's the oldest house, Tracy, I see you sitting up there now. But it's the oldest house, I'll say, in Upper Dorchester County. Middleton predates us to 1750s, but this was a upcountry residence for a sheriff of Colleton County, many senators, many House of Representatives. It's just, one, it's just a treasure that we still have this house. So. We thank you for all the years. We've never come here that you left us empty handed. Every bit of that stays in that house. So if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank it's you. a wonderful site. Thank it you. is. All right. Up next is uh, Dorchester County Parks and Recreation Department. They actually have uh, three requests. Um, I don't see Eric here tonight, so I don't think he's going to be presenting. Um, so we are going to move on. Uh, Longleaf uh, Productions. Good evening. How you doing, sir? Good. My name is Tom Lassiter. I am the president of Longleaf Productions and uh, appreciate the opportunity to present a little bit about our request tonight uh, to the board. Um, we're based in North Carolina, and our company is a nonprofit organization that uh, it was formed to work on films of interest of cultural, historical, and uh, environmental significance, primarily in the South, because we are, we are Southerners and your neighbors in North Carolina. Um, we have been working for a number of years on a film about Rosenwald schools, 
and I'm sure most of you on the board, if not all, are familiar with Rosenwald schools. Am I correct? Yeah. Um, there were hundreds of them built uh, in South Carolina, more than 500, I believe, uh, back in the 1920s through the early 30s um, for uh, African-American students in rural areas. They were meant to serve the kids in the rural areas of the South where uh, they didn't really have many educational opportunities. Um, Unfortunately, many of those schools uh, have disappeared and South Carolina has very few left these days. Um, while we've been working on a film about the big picture story about Rosenwald schools, which existed from Maryland to Texas, there were about 8,000 in the day when they were built. Um, very significant people like uh, uh, Ron McNair, the South Carolina astronaut, we believe his family attended Rosenwald schools. Um, Maya Angelou learned how to read and write in a Rosenwald school. Um, Senator John Matthews from South Carolina's mother taught at a Rosenwald school and he himself was a student in a Rosenwald school in his hometown. Um, just a way of saying that these played a significant role in the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. And when we learned that uh, the school in St. George was about to be renovated, uh, through some friends of ours in Columbia, we came over, we, we met the people involved in the school and saw that we were there in the early days, this was I think in 2017, um, that we had a chance to actually capture this process of renovation and show how the school was brought back from near ruin to uh, being a significant asset to the community again. And what we propose to do in partnership with the St. Uh, George Rosenwald School Board is to produce a short film that will be shown in the school to tourists, to the school groups that uh, are planned to come in. As you know, this is gonna be a regional um, 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 site for bringing kids in to introduce them to what schools used to be like and give them a real taste of history. Um, this short film will introduce all the visitors to the school's history. It will uh, show the renovation process from start to finish. But more importantly, it will let the people who attended the school, the alumni, uh, the friends of the school like Senator Matthews, uh, mayors uh, like Mayor Johnston, um, say in their own words why this is significant and meaningful to the community. Um, our organization has probably made a dozen or more trips to St. George uh, following this over the past couple of years. Um, we worked largely out of our own pockets on this. We did get a, a, a grant from the town of St. George last year. Um, and we will be continuing to follow this no matter what uh, so that we can produce this film. Uh, the grant that we've requested just goes to help defray expenses. Um, we have there's not money available to pay us for what we're doing. We're doing, doing it because we believe it's important. And uh, I'll be back over there tomorrow doing some filming because uh, a pretty significant event is about to close out as the building is, is dried in and, and weatherproofed and uh, ready for phase two of the renovation. Um, thank you for uh, the opportunity to present. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Questions? Do you have, is there a timeline for when that film could be seen by anyone? Well, uh, the building's gonna have to be finished first. Um, I haven't talked to Ralph James lately to see where we are, but like I say, they're finishing the exterior. Um, if funding comes through to do the interior, I would imagine, and, and you heard Glenn Key's name while ago, he's the architect on this project as well. We've interviewed him. Um, I would expect it's probably in the range of 18 months to two years, but I'm, I'm not the project leader. They don't tell me the, what their timeline is. Um, but we, are, we're, we have a lot of inf good information. We just need the visuals to kind of follow it through and then know exactly what the community wants. In other words, what the school wants to show. I'm anticipating a film in the range of 15 to 20 minutes. Would, would that be usable elsewhere absolutely it'll be it'll be available uh, wherever the school board would like to use it um, um, it would be uh, certainly appropriate for streaming online 
it would be appropriate for use. Um, of course, you know, in the schools, that's where they get all their videos now as it streams online so it can be made accessible to, uh, you know, county schools, regional schools. Um, we're working with uh, SCETV on another project and I don't know if they have a, a venue to show short films uh, on air, but if they do, it would certainly be available to them as well. So how would you anticipate this being used to draw visitors? It will be used to draw visitors if uh, it will be a featured thing, say on a website for the school to familiarize people with this attraction. And we do believe in working with um, the town of St. George and the community that, uh, that this is going to be a, a factor to draw people into St. George on a regular basis. This will be part of the tourism package and uh, the community is already seeing economic development. Things are getting fixed up in the neighborhood around the school. Um, this helps to explain what it's all about. If people can access it you know, online, get a taste of what they're coming to see before they pass through from north or south. That's, that's part of the package. Further questions? Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, Middleton Place. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Neal. I'm the Director of Preservation and Interpretation for the Middleton Place Foundation. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the committee very much. You've helped us greatly in the past, and uh, we greatly appreciate it. Um, Middleton Place, and hopefully everyone has been there, and if not, please come and visit us. Uh, we're 110 acres. It is a massive site. And even more massive is the history that is there. Matter of fact, the history that is at Middleton Place is mind-boggling with that. Um, both members of the Middleton family and also, should we say, the enslaved family out there, the enslaved community, they were instrumental in helping not only shape this local history here in the Low Country, but United States history as well. And the goal of this project is to try to bring this story out more, but more importantly, to enhance our visitor experience. Uh, on an average, we bring in roughly about 100,000 people a year come visit Middleton Place. And we want to try to give them this whole aspect so we can tell a complete story out there. And the goal of this project is actually has two sections to it. One, we're seeking to try to improve and update the panels that are at the visitor center. Uh, not only so we can better orient visitors as they go through the site, but also to explain the mission and the connections that are out there. Uh, so not only we can connect the site to American history, but we can also hopefully connect the visitor as well. And the second part of that, which is directly related to it, is trying to develop a mobile app that people can use their own as they go through the site. Uh, I think this has a lot of advantages. One, it helps people, first of all, it helps them guide their experiences points them to what they're interested in. Because as I said, we have a multitude of things that we could look at out there at that site. Uh, secondly, it would help them guide them better to the site to get them to all the exhibits, the tours, the uh, displays, the artisan shops, the animals, everything that is there. And then lastly, the one thing we have unfortunately experienced in these past five months is that with this pandemic, with this health crisis, we need to have a way that we can have almost, shall we say, a contactless experience, that we do not have to rely on, uh, on people, unfortunately, that a visitor could come out and he could be able to do this on his own and still get the full story of Middleton Place in a safe manner with that. Any questions or anything I can help with? Sir, of course. Okay, Thank you, sir, appreciate it. Thank you it. very much, appreciate it. Okay, Public Works Art Center. Hi, I'm Janet Riley. I am the Executive Director of Public Works Art Center. If you're not familiar with us, we have been working for about two years, we being a group of just really passionate community members um, on turning the old CPW building in historic downtown Somerville into a community art center prior to being the um, 
CPW, it was a post office built in the 1930s, so it's a very, very cool old building. And we were very passionate about making sure that it didn't become real estate offices or lawyers' offices, no offense to anybody in the room that may be one of those, but we really wanted to preserve this building and, and keep it in the public um, domain for as long as possible. We worked very, very hard for two years to get it up and running. Um, almost all of us are volunteers. I just started making enough to cover childcare this, uh, this month, but all a lot of passion. And we finally opened in February. We raised about almost $400,000 in grants and a, a lot of individual community donations. Found a lot of, um, a lot of uh, support from, from community members. We opened in February and we had a great first month. And I think you know where this story is going. <laughs> so um, we ended up having to close in, in March. Uh, what, what we did open in February, when we did open in February, we had and still do have three rotating galleries uh, that, that showcase artwork from the region, ideally national in the future. And uh, right now we have our first community exhibition going on. Those rotate out every six weeks, so it's a, it's a different experience relatively often. We have 13 studios rented by artists on an annual basis, and that pays our rent um, throughout the year. So we're kind of at a good baseline, but then we need to kind of keep going. We have, uh, we, we have a huge building, it's 1,100 square, or 11,000 square feet, so it's available for special event rentals. And then we have two classrooms, a pottery shop, a printmaking shop. One of the classrooms was uh, sponsored by the Junior Service League, and it's the children's classroom. It's adorable, and we're gonna start having uh, camps and classes there for kids. And we actually are just about to open a gift shop as well that's uh, all featuring handmade local artisan products. We even have a stage outside in a big parking lot. So we have just so many opportunities. We have a lot of white space, um, so to speak, for just all different kinds of events. We did open back up in June. Um, and we kind of we benefit from having all those large spaces. People feel pretty comfortable coming in. Um, but what they're not necessarily really comfortable with is, is taking classes in a traditional manner, uh, because that, that does end up being in a small space. We really, we, we make our money through our classes. I mean, we, we kind of pay the rent, the mortgage payment with those studio artists, but you know, obviously there are tons of other expenses. So the classes and the events are, are a big part of our organization. We've been creative since we opened back up. We just, we just uh, did an event, a little kitten painting party adoption event with Dorchester Paws last week. It was super successful. We had a lot of people coming in. We've had, we have a Latino, Latina, organization that we're working with called Palmetto Luna, which is in the state of South Carolina. They are coming in and bringing in people from all over South Carolina um, to a documentary streaming of about mi migrant farm workers here soon. And we've, we're doing yoga classes spread out. You know, we're, we're really trying to be creative about our offerings. But we, our challenge right now is figuring out how we can um, accommodate the public in this pandemic situation. So we've asked for um, the ability to be able to purchase a tent, a large tent that would be, it would be a temporary, it would just be set up for events and then taken down after events um, in our large back parking lot, as well as you know tables, chairs, fans, et cetera. Um, in this tent, we could, we could have so many different events and not only just have standalone events outside, but also um, expand larger events inside. So when we talk about having a wedding inside, we actually don't have a fire sprinkler system to install one in this old building made of just combustible materials top to bottom, it's, uh, it's about $100,000. So that's something that's just not feasible right now. Expanding events, saying we can have a wedding that can only have about 70 people or something is a little tricky, but expanding it to the back parking lot and having a lot more space is, um, is, is really, it would be a benefit to all the special events that we could have, which of course will bring in people from all over. Um, we believe that, uh, that, that this will help us kind of hang on during this difficult time, um, being able to, to present ourselves as a, as a space where you can do outdoor events or you can rent the, the, the space as a whole. That'll, that'll give us the money that we need, I think, to hold on. So does anybody have any questions? Questions? Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Appreciate I do want to say thank you so much for the money that you guys did uh, grant us last year. We, because we opened in February, we haven't, we didn't use it until we were getting ready to use it for promotion. We didn't want to promote until we were open. So our construction date got pushed back, and so now we're starting to use it for for promotion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. 
Okay, next up, Somerville, Juneteenth. No presenters. Thank you. Uh, the Flower Town players. Good evening. I'm Monica Chows. I'm the grant writer and I'm currently a board member for the Flower Town players. Um, we are still figuring out what we're going to do as an organization. Just like everybody else, we closed in March. We have not opened back up to the public yet. Um, the board is currently looking at potentially having a half season starting after the new year and um, micro events in our studio space that people would rent out. Um, so we've asked, um, the grant was written in the hopes that we would be able to start marketing ourselves back with the new year coming. It's very difficult for us to be shuttered. And one of the things that we keep watching is what Governor McMaster says about us opening up as an entertainment business. And part of the requirements is that you can open up to 50% of occupancy. However, we see 200 people and to better spread them out, we could only see it about quarter house if we do a production. Most of our productions have high expenses, which is usually our royalties. However, we are very, we have great faith that we will be able to potentially be back open in January. I do want to say that last year, the grant you gave us for um, our Christmas show was a golden opportunity for us to expand our marketing aspect towards other areas. And each week, I would follow our demographics of who attended. And one of the biggest things I discovered is that we had people coming from 146 miles away to come see our production. And I think that's a great testament to what you're able to do when you support our organization or any of these other organization, organizations for marketing. Um, I really don't have much more to say. We're just, we're just being diligent about who we are right now and we're looking forward to how we can bring entertainment back to our community in Dorchester County. Does anybody have any questions? Questions? No, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Timrod Library. Good evening. I'm Marcia Johnson. I am a volunteer at the historic and nationally registered Timrod Library. Um, whether I'm working out front with the books and checking out books or with the children's programming and in, in story time or writing a grant, I believe that li the Timrod Library is a gem in the historic district of Somerville. Um, and we are one of 26 of the nationally um, subscription libraries in the country. And I think <coughs> you should be very proud of that. Um, thank you for supporting the Timrod's 23rd year success of the Southern Author Series. Fortunately, we are able to have our guests, uh, best-selling authors, Cassandra King Conroy and the award-winning um, Post and Courier investigative reporter, uh, author Tim, uh, Tony Bartlemy, last February before the virus hit. Uh, we had a very successful um, event and we partnered with Bethel United Methodist Church across the street for this facility and we wanted to thank them. Um, and then afterwards, they come over to the library for our uh, Low Country reception, which is hosted and provided by the board members and the volunteers. Um, we have a one, we had wonderful gathering with the group of um, guests and some tourists that come out of the area and the authors. With the county's funding, sorry about that, we hope to increase our advertising this year for this event and uh, in order to make up for some of the losses, and we had to cancel some of our spring, summer, and of course our fall fundraiser because of the virus. Um, and thankfully, we have a conservative budget. We have only three part-time employees, and we are blessed with um, many volunteers who generously donate over 100 hours a month to keep the library doors open six days a week. Um, we realize that the tax base next year is going to be lower 
but I invite you to think about who the tourists are that frequent these community events, attractions, restaurants, and businesses. I want you to say the majority of the people that come to these events are local uh, county and hometown tourists. And they're the ones that consistently support our community, you know, our, our theaters and our arts and, and all the wonderful events that we have here. And we at the Timurat appreciate our county and low country tourists, and we continue to operate and want to provide the culture and history and literature for another 100 years as a subscription library. Thank you for your consideration and support. Do uh, you have any questions? Can you, can you go over how you how you plan to, to spend this money outside of the area to bring people into the town? Well, we, um, we put ads in the Post and Courier magazine, the Azalea magazine, Somerville, and we send out flyers and brochures um, and signage. And we do use our website. And all that is um, volunteer. A lot of the volunteer um, work is on the website and the social media. Most of the ones you mentioned were right here. Somerville. Right. We, we'd hope to use the radio, too. We haven't used that. Um, Say that again. The radio, radio, to have some advertising on the radio, different media. Further questions? Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Last but not least, Town of St. George. Good evening, uh, I'm Ralph James from the town of St. George representing the Rosenwald School located there in the town of St. George. And uh, we certainly want to thank you for the support given us. And uh, I'm not sure of your protocol for distribution of printed material, but uh, one, two, three, four. we have a couple of brochures here uh, that would uh, set the... Uh, you just sit on there share with you pictures of the school where it was located and uh, the condition you found it in. And it's uh, the Rosenwald School, as you've heard earlier, uh, we are about one of about 700 still in existence here. Uh, matter of fact, we pride ourselves, the one located there in St. George is one of the largest in the Southeast. Normally there were one, two room uh, school building. Here we have a six that was expanded to nine uh, classrooms there. So we are bringing it back alive. It's located into what we call the uptown St. George uh, uh, community there. And we, along with the school, we also have the uh, ability to relate directly to several local businesses during that time that we are renovating and the community have joined us in that effort. Uh, we also would like to say that uh, as we build the school and uh, restore the school, we went out to locate as much of the original material as we could. And within a 15 mile radius, we were able to find about 45 of the original desks that were located in the school and including two uh, pot belly stoves that was original out of school and we are getting them and restoring them. So we're moving forward with that. Also the vocational building at the rear of the school, we're trying to uh, uh, bring that back alive with actual rural living during that time. We are uh, grits mill, we have a grits mill that we're located and we're trying to acquire, uh, show the tourists and visitors how grits really was made there. We have donated a cane mill. Let me show how we made syrup. Uh, also, we have a washer display of how the old wash and iron was, the old pot tubs, uh, uh, the irons, uh, uh, the old ringer type washing machines. All of that will be on display and be part of the exhibits uh, that we have there. And last but not uh, uh, least on there, once we get started our programming, we hope to cater to the youth of the area. And we are trying to a partner with the Children's Museum of the Low Country and uh, putting a children's museum on the north side or the north wing of the building that you see there. Here, uh, and again, I'm sorry to put you to work again, but this is what we envisioned 
as being in that children's museum. It's an interactive play with children learning how things were actually then. But the uniqueness of this is every exhibit that's there in the children's museum would be connected to a live actual business or, or entity that existed, that still exists, that we are restoring in the community. An example of this, we have the oldest, uh, there was a grocery store, uh, there was a sweet shop, uh, uh, there was a grill, and of course the last on that display there is a uh, train car, a little dining car. Uh, we hope to reestablish Georgia Station with uh, two cars there, and one would be a caboose and the other would be a dining car. In the dining car, we would bring back the life of the Pullman Porters. And we would tell the story of the Pullman Porters, what they did and how they serve uh, the visitors and tourists and the travelers utilizing the train. And one of the Pullman Porters, believe it or not, taught at the school and once was principal at that same Rosenwald School and his uh, old house spot is still just across the street from the school. So we bring in everything together. As you know, St. George, such as Somerville, there's a railroad that comes right through the main part of our town. So what we hope to do is to implement a safety program there where we can come in and talk about the railroad safety, uh, observing the train as it's coming through, the stop signs and the caution signs and whatever. This would be periodically throughout the year, not only for the children and the school children, but also for the community. And we are trying to partner that safety program with Norfolk Southern. They are working with us there. So we've got an ongoing need, and, uh, but we have great support from the community, and uh, we are just uh, trying everywhere we can to get some funds to help us move along the way. And we thank you for being able to uh, award our contract on the interior of that through your help. So we are moving forward and uh, don't let us down now, just keep with us and I'm quite sure Dorchester County and this area would certainly benefit from what we're doing uh, in that area there. Thank you very much, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we're going to move into discussions for disbursement um, board. You've heard the presentations. Uh, let's start out uh, on the same order, Audubon Center. Um, amount requested is 3000 Any discussion on that? Before you get started, I'm new to this. What are the total dollars we have to distribute this year? Total total distribute is sixty-four thousand five seventy-five twenty-seven, and uh, thirty percent of that is being allocated to advertising and promotion of twenty-one thousand one sixty-two sixty-three. So, yeah, the balance that the committee has to allocate of the sixty-five percent funds is forty-five thousand eight hundred fifty-two dollars and thirty-six cents. That, that's a requirement. We've got to distribute all of those funds. You do not have to disperse all the funds. You have two years to use the funding as it's received. So um, I believe it was last year the committee actually didn't allocate all of the funding. They carried some over and then dispersed it the next year. Okay. Thank you. And you can look on your screens. Uh, Daniel yeah. actually has that worksheet up. So you can see those numbers on your screens in front of you, I believe. I hope. Mr. Chairman, I think the the um, Audubon Center um, proposal is is pretty exciting. Um, you know, they've they've been very um, cognizant of of their money allocations in the past, and um, I recommend I make a motion that we fully support that one at three thousand dollars. I'll second that motion. 
Okay, I have a first and a second. Um, all, all agree? Say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. We'll go ahead and, and uh, distribute 3,000, uh, the full amount to be distributed to Audubon Center. Let's, let's say that, uh, you know, like we normally do, we're going to have to kind of circle back. Kind of circle back. <laughs> you know, that, that's, what, that's what I'm recommending for now. Let's, we're going to go through the list. There's not enough money no. to get to fully fund every um, request, and we know that's the case. So we may have to circle back, but I, that's, that's what, what I recommend putting in for now. Okay. You know, we normally have to do that. I agree. I agree. And Daniel, uh, we'll ask you to chime in on certain certain organizations. Yes, sir. Um, Dorchester County Heritage Center. Um, that's one we'll start off with. Sure. And uh, I pulled up some guidance from the Tourism Expenditure Review Committee and the statute, state statute, to review as we go through these requests. Um, there's a portion of this one, I believe it's five thousand dollars attributable to maintenance and operations uh, that would not be fundable. Uh, and the Turk specifically mentions uh, funding museums as a non-fundable source, um, but the actual uh, tourism advertising component, the advertisement component of what they're doing would be considered fundable uh, with the nexus to tourism generating activity and including the website. Okay, so the total amount that we can distribute there is 8K if we need Correct. to. Okay. Uh, discussion on Dorchester County Heritage Center, please. That's, that's the, the 8K is the maximum? Yes. Daniel, has the law has the law that been changed? Is that anything recent, or is that the way the law has been re been reading for some time now? It has, and I'll say the only thing that's changed in this respect was coming out of the uh, legislature last year. There was a bill proposed to actually eliminate the Tourism Expenditure Review Committee. Uh, so I suspect some folks might have uh, felt that their worth was uh, not proving the way that it was supposed to, and that did not make its way through the session as a result of. Uh, coronavirus and everything that cropped up. It didn't meet crossover, but there haven't been any other changes to it. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I'll make a motion that we fully fund the $8,000. Okay, a uh, motion has been made to fully fund 8K. Do you have a second on that? I'll second. No, second. Okay, we have, uh, we have approved, approved the 8K for that. And once again, uh, as uh, board member Todd said, we will circle back and take a look at this as a declining balance, so to speak. Um, Dorchester County Historical so Society, and I believe that's another one, Daniel, you wanna chime in on? Sure, and actually we put on here that it was not, but there is a portion that they requested that is fundable. There's $439 requested for newspapers, websites, and out of county mailings, and that would be eligible the uh, two thousand seven hundred and seventy-five dollars that we've mentioned in the past uh, has not been fundable. And last year, uh, the committee gave one thousand seven hundred and twelve dollars and seventy-eight cents, uh, which I believe was attributable to the same part of the request. Okay, hearing that, do you have any recommendations on Dorchester County Historical Society Kroger House? Yeah. Um I wish we could fund the whole thing. I'm almost tempted to make a motion that we uh, try to do that, um, but hearing the staff recommendation, I wanna be more cautious than that, and uh, I think we should fund them on the part of the grant application that we, that we can, so that's my motion. I don't know the exact dollar. I'm trying to find that. 439. 439. 430, yeah. I'll second. Hearing a first and second. I have a question. Yes, sir. Is, is, are there other areas that we could expand that to with them? No, I, I think it's the committee's prerogative, certainly, to determine if there's some area that they could use the funding that's permissible if you wanted to give them more to do things that were allowable, such as printing of rack cards and promoting of events. You could do that. Um, just to give you an example, um, and Mr. Sutton, for your edification, in the prior year, whenever it was two years ago, the committee did not make recommendations to fund all of the requests that had been made. And last year, uh, the fund balance that was carried over was being recommended to give to the county's Do More Dorchester campaign, 
which was above and beyond what the county had requested for that program. So if there's something that you see as a um, worthy event or cause that's requested funding here today and you wanted to slightly amend uh, the categorization of what they requested, you could do that. I'm just, I'm just certain they could use more than $439 for promoting the Coger House. Um, that's, a, that's a wonderful venue and it's a shame that more people can't get out there and see it because it does tell us a lot about our history. So I would like to move that we increase that by at least another $500 for with the codicil that that is for promotion. Okay. So uh, do I hear a motion to uh, increase the funding to at least uh, $1,000, an even number, on the Kroger House? I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Okay, I got a first and second on the uh, funding of the Kroger House at one k $1,000, and that has been approved. Okay, uh, Dorchester County Parks and Recreation. Um, I guess we'll handle this as... as on each event, uh, Ashley River event adventure race, um, their request is $2,000. Discussion on that, please. What's the date on that? Good question. Um, July, March 2021. This is July 21. Yeah, he's got March of 2021. March, know that right. That one's March of 21. Yeah, March 2021. Being that we got three different requests for the same entity. Um, would, it, would it be a problem to um, do a lump sum for the whole the whole entity and let them decide how to do the one Well, these are treated as three separate events, and I think we have to treat them as such, do we not? We would need some direction as far as how to allocate the funds and which, which event they could use the funding for, yes, sir? Okay. Daniel, can you talk to us about how the 30% money is being used? Sure. And I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we just received a report from our public information officer this week. Uh, so the committee recommended the 30% money plus the unallocated balance last year, which was an additional 24000 excuse me, an additional $20,941. So we had roughly $44,000 to work with. Um, so what they've done with that is hired... Touchpoint Communications to do a marketing campaign titled Do More Dorchester. And so they've done billboards along I-26 and I-95. Uh, they've done some marketing promotional materials like koozies and stickers. Uh, actually, they put the Do More Dorchester campaign stickers on the back of all the county vehicles as they're coming in for service. And they also wrapped a carta bus uh, with the Do More Dorchester uh, graphics that runs the express routes on a rotating basis. And uh, they're actually requesting some additional hospitality tax money to keep that bus wrap going uh, into the next year, regardless of the accommodations tax recommendation that's provided. So the, the Do More Dorchester name as, as a whole routes back to a special website that talks about promoting all of the county's resources uh, as far as hiking, the rivers, uh, different cultural resources, things to do outdoors. Um, and so it's kind of a tourism promotion website component of the county's main website. Do more Dorchester. Mm -hmm. And within Do More Dorchester, is there an opportunity to, to publicize these events that there so right these now? events would be tied on the county's website, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. The two of the two of the three are, are for social media marketing for for events, it looks like. Yeah, you're correct. The last two that are listed, Ashley River Park opening and the uh, promotion of the Davis-Bailey Park opening as well. So the, the only different resource that they operate separate from the county as a whole is they do have their own social media. 
Um, but we do share the same common website as far as those resources go. Yeah. Okay. The first in the first application is it looks like the specifics of that two thousand dollar request is for event T shirts. That what? Yeah, that's correct. You all see? Yes. Mm -hmm. In a, in, in a COVID economy, I'm having trouble with <laughs> event t-shirts. I agree. Any further discussion on that? Should we revisit that later? Yeah, we can certainly table that. Okay, uh, as far as the marketing and advertisement for the Ashley River opening in the Davis Bailey, that's a uh, request at $2,000 each. Any further discussion on those two events? I'll make a motion to fund them fully. Okay, here, first to uh, fund both of those fully. Do I have a second on that? I'll second that. Okay, so we got a second on uh, the marketing and advertising promotion of the Ashley River Park opening and the marketing and advertising promotion of the Davis Bailey park opening at 2000 each. We will come back and revisit the uh, first request. All right, moving on. Uh, Longleaf Productions, uh, their request uh, was $5,000 for the production of an educational documentary related to the Rosenwald School. Discussion on that, please. My main concern with that is they're not looking to film until the renovation is completed is what I understood, is that correct? And we don't really have a timeline on that. I think the, the filming is going it's on. Ongoing, yeah. okay. The filming is going on, the, the actual um, use of the film would be later as well. Okay. Further discussion on that? Depending on how that's distributed, what the use is, I can see where that's that a real plus. That may not be something we'll see immediate results from, but down the road, I, I can see where that would draw people in. I think that's that school and the the surrounding area that we're talking about developing is very unique. There are not many places that, that, and that, that has such potential to expand from just the school. Gotcha. Yeah. I guess my issue with it is just the time frame for, for right now. The, I get it. See of it right now. Um, um, with the limited re limited limited resources we've got tonight, that's right. my knowledge you with it. I'd like to see partially funded then something half half a glass is better than no glass. I make a motion we fund it at half twenty five hundred dollars. Okay, motion has been um, made for uh, funding at twenty five hundred dollars. Do I have a second? I'll second that. As a second. It's been moved. Uh, we are funding that at 2.5, 2,500. Okay, next up is Middleton Place. <laughs> Mr. Todd is recusing himself uh, due to his uh, involvement with Middleton Place. Talk bad about you. No, we'll try not to. My microphone's turned off. 
Well, as you can see, and as I stated last year, you know, Middleton is a big contributed, contributor to our uh, accommodations tax in, our, in the county. So I definitely move the motion to fund them fully at the 10,000. Okay, yeah, just to piggyback on that, uh, it is the largest revenue producer in Dorchester County as far as hospitality is concerned, year after year, and it's not even close. So um, uh, I, I fully agree with that. Um, we never, we've never had a problem um, promoting uh, Middleton Place in the past. So um, do I have a second on that? I'll second that. Second, okay. Our first and the second, uh, we have approved uh, 10000 to be distributed to Middleton Place. Thank you. Welcome back. I apologize for jumping up and jumping out <laughs> on that. So. It's one of those things. Sometimes hard to remember. Oh, yeah. No question about it. Okay, Daniel, if you would uh, brief us on the Public Works Art Center, please. Sure. This, this was a tough one last year. You know, you funded the request for marketing, um, and that was, you know, met the spirit of the uh, statute. This one, the TURC guidance is somewhat vague on the purchase of supplies and things of that nature. Um, I guess you would probably couch it in the, the form of operations, but the statute talks about tourism related expenditures and, you know, most vividly describes that as far as marketing and things of those natures. So the purchase of uh, the tent, string lights, folding tables, things like that, we couldn't recommend to meet the spirit of that definition. Okay. All right. Having heard that, um, do we want to table this and move forward and come back to that? Sound good? Okay, we'll yeah. table that one for now. All right, next is uh, Somerville, Juneteenth. Uh, Dan, you want to comment on, that, comment on that as well, please? Yeah, and this one, again, this was difficult. Um, there's a, some discussion in the statute about the nexus between you know, tourism generating and being able to prove the you know, amount of percentage of visitors that are generated from out of the area, out of market, you know, greater than 50 miles versus those that come from within the area. It was apparent from the application that this was more of a in the area event, uh, as well as the uh, fact that the Turk talks about not necessarily funding the uh, type of cultural veterans affairs type activities um, in specific nature. So uh, last year we received a request to do uh, the veterans affairs organization to do an event up in St. George, and uh, that was not fundable by accommodations tax. However, the county later uh, opted to provide some hospitality tax funding because the hospitality tax statute does allow for those types of events to be funded. So it's just you know, a difference in the statutory language um, between those two types of funding sources. And as you know, the county does now have a 2% hospitality tax on uh, prepared food and beverage. Fair enough. All right, uh, moving on, Flower Town Players. Uh, request is 5,000 for marking the theater and whatever events are produced in the future. Before we move on to that one real quick, um, is there any way that uh, we can communicate with these folks um, and let them know um, the parameters of, of, of uh, why we're, we're having an issue with this Juneteenth celebration? It, it is very... Um, it's an important thing that they're doing, and if they can have a successful year and prove that they are bringing in people from out of, out of the uh, area, it's certainly something that we'd want to look at next year. I want to tell you that um, I do send all of the applicants letters, whether they are being um, awarded funds or not, and tell them the reasons which they're not. And the guidance that Daniel brought up earlier is actually on our website as well, along with the accommodations tax funding information. 
Thanks, Jessica. I would, Thank you. I would let them know. I think it's a worthwhile event. It just doesn't fall in the, in the auspices of what we can do. That's correct. Okay, back back to Flower Town players. Discussion on that, please. You know, we've supported Flower Town for many years. Um, we always supported the the um, was it the Lori up in St. George mm -hmm. for, for many years as well. They're not applying anymore. Um, so it's definitely something that we've got a long history of supporting. The 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 thing that concerns me about this one this time is 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 really a. And I know it's tough in COVID environment that we're in right now, but kind of a lack of a plan or lack of any specificity of what uh -huh. this $5,000 is going to be spent on a little, or well, there's some there, but I'd, I'd like to see more. We normally do see more. Um, so I've got a you know, bit of a concern there. Not that we'd want, not that I would recommend um, not funding that at all. Further discussions on that? that bothers anybody else or not, maybe I'm the only one. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. sort of willing to listen and want, want to hear. I kind of agree with you. Yeah. Is there a way they could come back with a more concrete advertising plan? I don't think there's a way to come back to this body. I mean, when yeah. we're done, we're okay. done. I'm, I'm asking the question. I, I think so. That's. Um, Sort of like, uh, you know, you've got to get your application in and you got to get it in. Yeah, it's a timely thing as well. Further discussion on that? I would recommend right now let's table it, finish up, and, and, and see where we are and go back, go back to it because we know we don't want to not do anything for them. It Agreed. Or, you know. Fair enough. We'll, we'll table the Flower Town players as well. Um, up next, Timrod Library and Library Association, Timrod Library's annual Southern Author Series, and they're requesting 3,000. I think 3,000 is a little high with the parameters in which they're advertising locally. I think if we had a better plan of how to get outside visitors to the library, um, I could see where 3,000 would make sense. Um, take Azalea Magazine, for example. Most subscribers for Azalea Magazine probably already know that the library exists. So I just don't think that, I think that 3,000 is a lot to advertise locally. Any recommendation on, an, uh, on a amount? If we look at what we did for them last year, which I think that's this. 1500. It's very tiny handwriting. <laughs> Good luck handwriting. with that. <laughs> it's, it is the same. Yep. It's the same from last year. Um, you know, we supported them at uh, $1,500. That's a matter of information. I'd like to move a motion to um, allocate the 1500 again um, this time around as well. I have a second on that. So moved. A second. I hear a second. So we will go ahead and uh, distribute 1500 to the Tim Rod Library. Okay, up next is the Town of St. George Rosenwald School Restoration. They're requesting $10,000. Jessica, how are we doing on? You have $15,852.36. Remaining. What did we allocate last year? Or what got approved? We allocated eight to eight thousand dollars last year. Okay. I make a motion we fully funded ten thousand dollars. A second.
I would second that if I knew where we were and being <laughs> able to being able to plug some more in somewhere, you know, to the other pl other holes is uh, a reason why I'm hesitant. Take my motion. How about we fully fund it if at all possible? I'm with you. If you were to say eight, you know, that, I think that's the wiggle room we might need. Anyway, let's. Is that where we at? Eight? I, I think we should. I like to set the motion. The yeah. I like to set the motion for to to grant them the. 8,000 that we also did last year and then maybe circle back. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll second that. Okay, we got a first and second at $8,000 to fund uh, Town of Rosewall, or excuse me, Town of St. George Rosewall School Restoration. That has been approved. Okay, and that leaves us with a balance of 7,852.36. And we will come back up to um, Dorchester County Parks and Recreation Department. The last two uh, that are listed are marketing, advertising, and promotion of the Ashley River Park opening and of the Davis Bailey Park opening. Just a reminder, 7582 and some change. Yep. Would, would those be on the same day? Uh, I don't think so. Um, let me check. They won't. Okay. I thought you did, you know, two thousand. I had two thousand on each of the openings. Okay, so we're we're looking at the first one. I I apologize. Yes, uh, Ashley River event adventure race. I think with that event uh, for the the adventure race between the county website and their own social media, um, I don't I don't really feel the need to to fund that two thousand dollars. I agree. I, I I make a motion that we that we pass on that. I second that. Okay, there's been a motion uh, first and second to pass on funding for the first listed Ashley River event, adventure race. Which brings us down to um, Public Works Art Center. We're back there again. What was the dollar amount on that? 4361.27 was their request. Are you referring to what's what the balance they're is? They're asking. Yeah, that's what they're asking. But again, we're... We would have to reallocate that to something different. To something different. Um, yeah, if we allocate for the proposed grant, applicate, you know, the proposed um, project, we're going against staff recommendation. I, I personally think that this is a very good thing for Somerville. Um, you know, hopefully, I think that more marketing and promotion needs to be done, um, which will help pay for the things that they are applying for, with the, the funding that they're applying for. So I'd like to move a motion to grant them $1,500 for promotion and advertising purposes. A second. Okay, I have a first and a second for fifteen hundred dollars uh, distribution for the Public Works Arts Center. Tracy, you have anything? I was just wondering where where we are on the on our number. We are at balance of six thousand three fifty two thirty six, and we are. I'd like to. I think we could increase that number a bit. Um, for the for the public works art center okay um considering we're kind of getting down to the nitty-gritty here we're, we're getting close to the end um and uh we've got this this balance um so I, i'd like to make a motion that we uh double that to three thousand i second that i got a first and second uh going back to public works art center for a three thousand dollars distribution Accepted. All right, uh, we are back down to the Flower Town players, and let's see, our current balance is four thousand eight fifty two thirty six. Again, I piggyback on what you said earlier, Mr. Tracy, about the uh, uncertainty of where we're going, um, and I can only assume that five thousand dollars was for marketing for the year. So I would, I would say that they. 
probably with the uncertainty of even the beginning of the, the first quarter of next year, where the, where the Flower Time players are gonna be, I think that we should allocate a portion of that, um, probably 50%. So my, my recommendation would, would put forward a motion of uh, $2,500 towards the Flower Town players. I'm, I, I'll second that. Okay, I got a first and second on the Flower Town players to fund them at $2,500. And leaves us with a balance of twenty three fifty two thirty six, And I think we are back down to town of St. George we were going to circle back with that. Yeah, and I'd like to circle also back to the um, Kroger House, if, if, if yep. the uh, committee's okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we're back. Um, I think we had uh, we had a first and second on $1,000 distribution for the Kroger House. Where are we now? 2352 I believe. 2352 Could we increase that to? I think we should double it. Double it. I think we should double it. Twenty three fifty two thirty six is the balance. I think we should. Thirteen fifty two thirty six. I I'd propose to move a motion to double it to two thousand. Yeah. Do I have a second on that two thousand dollar recommendation? I got a second. Um, we are moving uh, Dorchester County, uh, let's see, I'm sorry, Dorchester County Historical Society, the Kroger House at $2,000 distribution. And that just leaves us. Yep. Where were we on Juneteenth and, um, event? We weren't able to it, we can't fund that at all. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So we're left with one thousand dollars to distribute. Um, Let's have a party. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I recommend we um, send that that last remaining balance down to St. George for the Roslyn Wall School. Second. Okay, so that would bring that. I have a first and second to bring the remaining balance of a thousand dollars down to the Rosewall school and that would give them a full funding of 9,352.36 if the math is correct <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah I just I, I wish there was someone here from Juneteenth because I, I really am a little bit heartbroken over not being able to fund that at all but I, I agree with Daniel that if we did we probably would run a foul with the state yeah it's a it's an awkward situation you know with the tourism expenditure review committee you know they're they're pretty much a second authority over the top of the local accommodations tax advisory committees and i found myself in a rather uncomfortable situation when i first started with the county back in 2016 uh, we had an organization that had expended their funds on a, a purpose that was improper and i had to claw back almost ten thousand uh, dollars from a small nonprofit, and uh, i know that inflicted some harm on them financially and so you know you always try to follow the law up front so that you don't find yourself in a position to have to follow an order of the expenditure review committee, which literally, you know, second to them and what they put forth, the only other remedy is the administrative law court. So it's one of those things where what they say pretty much is what goes. Right. Uh, and I'll say as well, uh, for what it's worth in these instances where uh, requests were funded outside of what was actually requested, we'll make sure when we send the letters to those organizations that we specify exactly what the intent of the committee was and ensure that the ordinance is followed and the statutes followed so that we don't find ourselves in a similar situation where we have a, a Turk issue and have to do any clawbacks or anything like that. Understood. And, yeah. and for our, we only did that with the Kroger House, right? Uh, as and we, Public Works. Point. Public Works and the Kroger House, yes, sir. Right. Yep. Oh, that's true. Public Works and the Kroger House. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, so the uh, full forty-five thousand eight fifty-two thirty-six has been distributed. Uh, can I get a motion to accept uh, the amount that has been distributed? Motion to accept. Second. 
I have a first and second. Uh, here, all aye. Say aye. aye. Thank you. All ayes have it. Motion is passed. Okay, got a first and second to uh, hold next year's meeting at the St. George Chambers. Um, that has been passed. Look forward to seeing everyone out there next year. Any more, anything else for the committee? No, sir. Oh. Here, motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. Yes. Second. Adjourn. Thank you, folks, for coming out. Appreciate it.